Hi, this is Jim Ave, your professor for research methods in kinesiology. In this uh, lecture, I'm going to cover the, the discussion section of the research paper assignment. But first I'll review our research process and then I'll get into the discussion section for the paper. As a reminder, our research process. Um, after picking your topic, you conducted a literature review using the uh, secondary sources such as textbooks and other uh, overview type books. And then you also read the primary um, sources such as uh, original research. From there, you developed a research question and you developed a hypothesis. In our class, we did the null hypothesis. Other researchers will use a hypothesis saying what they expect to happen versus the null hypothesis, which is saying there's no change at all. And then from there, you develop your research methods. After you do that, a person who is actually doing a study, unlike you, you, you were just pretending to do a study, you will conduct a study. You'll collect data of some sort, numbers or words. You analyze the data and you interpret the data and you report the data, which means you're drawing some kind of conclusions and findings from this stuff. Uh, we talked in a previous lecture about the results section. And in that section, you're talking about, hey, what do we find here? We're using the statistics. Uh, that's the analyzing and interpreting the data. And so that's what you would do in the other section. You just report what was found. Then in the discussion section, we'll answer the so what question. What do the findings mean? Uh, we'll break that down. And I've also added application. How can I use this? So our discussion section, it's um, really the most challenging section to write. Um, this is really the part of the assignment that is testing your uh, graduate level knowledge, your analyzing. I use some of, of you who know Bloom's taxonomy. Uh, this is a uh, section where you're uh, looking at what was found and drawing uh, conclusions and doing some other things. So in this section, you're going to have one paragraph on conclusions. You're just going to turn the numbers that are in uh, your previous section into words. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't want to see any kind of um, numbers in your one paragraph conclusion. And again, I'll give you an example here. Then you have a discussion section. It's two to three paragraphs. I want you to give me some recommendations, three to four paragraphs, and application, three to five paragraphs. So let me give you some actual examples here. So conclusions again, what were the main findings of the study? As I said just a second ago, use words to explain the numbers. So let's, here's an example. The purpose of this study was to investigate the psychological response to injury of student athletes at a NEIA institution as measured by the MPRS2. It was found that there was no significant differences in the psychological responses to injury in student athletes participating at that at a NAIA, NAIA institution. So what does that mean? Um, let's pull this apart a, a little bit. If we knew all the, the background, the purpose of the study, they looked at to see how student athletes responded to injuries. What was that like? And so the student compared groups, two groups of students or groups of students and students were pretty much no change in them. They didn't psychologically have any damage because they were hurt. So that's what that means in real English. So that's your, your conclusion should be something like that. And they turned the word, the numbers into words. Again, read other um, concluding articles uh, when we do this that give you help to do this, I should say. Now, the discussion section is I want you to explain, uh, I want you to provide a linkage between this particular study that you're pretending to do to research that was done previously. Mm -hmm. How are your findings or your pretend findings and results uh, similar to previous studies or not similar to previous studies. Uh, 
what are some theories out there that you've been reading about and how can you, uh, how does the findings of this pretend study fit into the theories? Uh, it's a pretty long example. It, um, I'm not going to read this to you. You can read this on your own, but this uh, student provided a good linkage to previous study and then what happened in her study when she did this. This student actually did this study um, in the first year of our program as a thesis. It was a fairly interesting uh, research study. So you can read that on, on your own and see how she connected her findings to what was done um, by some of the other researchers in the field. Our next one is recommendations. What I want you to do is uh, how would you recommend to, if, if you're an athletic training emphasis, you're a sport administration emphasis, PE emphasis, stay in your specific area. So if you're a PE teacher and you're doing a PE uh, type study, how's the information from this particular pretend study, uh, how would other PE teachers be able to use the material based on what was, what was, hap what was found, pretend found? in this um, pretend study. Just thinking about it as yourself. How would you use it? But that's the next section, that's application. So I'm trying to get you to think gl more globally. Um, er uh, how could the other people in our area? So again, if you're a PE person, write to PE teachers. If you're an athletic trainer, write to athletic trainers. If you're a coach, write to coaches. If you're sport administration, write to sport administrators with this. So again, pretty long example here. You can read that on your own, but uh, this student did a good job of um, helping uh, other coaches or instructors with this information. Uh, and here, I still want you to write in the third person. All these, all these sections are still in the third person. Here's a new section I'm adding this uh, for this class. It's application section. Now, in this section, I'm allowing you to go into the first person because I want to know how you can actually use this information. So right in the first person, I don't have any examples because this is a brand new section in this assignment. Um, so I want you to give me information on how you can see yourself as a PE teacher, as a coach, as an athletic trainer, as a, a future athletic director, or as a current athletic director how you can use the information from the findings, uh, from the literature review, uh, through the this eight weeks you've been in this class or, or so, how you can use the information um, in your particular profession. I'm interested to see uh, the application. Uh, what good is studying all this stuff? We don't, we can't use it in any way. This is supposed to be applied material, so we're, we're into this area of kinesiology that we're in because we like doing stuff. So that's what I want you to discuss is how can you use this information? I think it's always good to, with all your papers to end them with a summary a one paragraph uh, summarizing the whole project paper and one paragraph. Now in conclusion of this particular lecture um, I think it's really helpful to you, and I said it earlier, is to read the conclusion and discussion sections of, of, of the other journal articles uh, to help you see how uh, researchers write these sections. And that's true of all the other sections for your research paper assignment. Um, it's, it's a helpful way for you to um, discuss the different areas in, our, in this assignment and it will help you with writing the, the final section in this assignment. I hope you have uh, f at least some fun uh, with this particular research paper assignment. I try to make it practical and, um, and hopefully you enjoy your topic that you picked. As always, if you need help, let me know and I'm here to help you.